She lost today, bro. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to this much, very anticipated game tonight. Napa Valley 1839 takes on Las Chivas Rayadas de Guadalajara here at the Memorial Stadium in Napa Valley. 
where the temperature is currently really hot. We're looking at about 97 degrees Fahrenheit. It's an amazing atmosphere, though. The legends from Guadalajara making an appearance for the first time ever in Napa Valley. Something Napa's never seen. Today joins me Chuy Ochoa, vintage legend and NBC star, and Yami, two-time BBC champion, to commentate with me, your host, Juan Daniel Avila. I'm back here. Chuy, this is a dream come true, man. I, I'm lost for words at this point. Sorry if I sound nervous, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for both of us. How are you doing, man? Oh, yeah, man. It's a very hot day today, but, man, it's a special day in Napa Valley because this is a team that we saw in 2005, Lucy Pumas in the final in PKs, and then in 2007 when we won the final against Toluca, I believe. So it's, it's special. There's Reynoso, there's Venado, there's Ramoncito, Almeida on the earthquakes, Salcido. It's a special day. I'm excited for this match. Let me pass it on to Yami. Yes, off a quick observation, you could just tell the crowd is electric. Both 1839 fans and Las Chivas fans came out to support. You know, it is a real blast from the past seeing Chivas, well, the team that came and the in particular, or in the in particular individuals that decided to show up. You know, you can definitely see with an immense amount of the crowd that they are just excited you can see relived emotions from previous years and you can just tell that there's going to be nothing short of an electrifying game danny of course we'll start with the starters right away these legends man here they come gustavo sendeda number one goalkeeper actually for chivas he played a couple times under cruz azul and uh with mexico he got called up a couple times but had a couple injuries there we got carlos salcido number three in the back obviously everyone knows that legend Played for PSV. We could see him here at the top of your screen. Greatest legend. Very much compared to Rafa Marquez. Went overseas. Won the championship with uh, Chivas in 2006 against Toluca. In which we see also Magallon right here. Johnny Magallon. He's number 19. He played alongside Hector Reynoso, which is number 4. We have Salvador Camarona, 18. Number 2, Claudio Suarez, El Emperador. The man himself is here. The man with the most caps for Mexico all-time national team. That is exciting. As you could hear, this is an electric night for sure. We have Ramoncito Ramirez Morales playing with number 11, his actual, actual number that he used when he played back in 2006 and won that championship with them. We also had El Venado Medino with the number 10, his classic number, he made an appearance as well in the 2006 Liga MX Apertura where they took on Toluca as well, scoring 10 goals that season. He's probably the fittest guy here out on the field for them. And the biggest appearance would be Johnny, sorry, Pelado Almeida, making his appearance, making his dream come true for Chivas. And he took Chivas' latest championship in 2017 taking uh, the younger generation of the Chiva legends to a championship. Yami, how are you feeling about this game? With names like that and just understanding the team, this is going to be probably 1839's toughest test yet. I know we've had the U19s from Las Chivas come out a few years ago and the same thing with Club America, but just names like this and the work that they have put on paper, you can only imagine the type of energy they still have left in the tank after all this time. Everybody here is just excited to just be able to play the beautiful game. So you can only expect nothing short of excitement from the first to the 90th minute. Danny. Yes, and the subs, they have a great sub bench too. Diego Martinez is number two. Omar Esparza, 16. Amaury Ponce, 14. Manolo Martinez, 11. And Ignacio Vasquez, number nine. Tremendous bench. But it looks like Salcido stepping up to the attack. This man has a great right foot. He scored so many goals for PSV and Chivas. I'm sure he's going to be able to uh, put in a goal today. And uh, Napa's definitely has to be prepared for these legends because they might not be in the greatest shape, but they still got that talent. Ramoncito Morales can shoot from the 50-yard line and still score. So I'm really prepared for this game. As the game rolls and begins, we will be talking in Spanish and English tonight. Empieza el balón rodando por el... Estadio de Memorial Stadium. Y luego, luego viene atacando el Shark, Baby Shark, mientras les damos 
su marcador y Almeida luego luego tocando el balón. Almeida now touching the ball, looking for Morales. Morales doesn't even have his shin guards on. Chewy, how are you feeling about that, man? He's taking this very lightly. Yeah, man, this is crazy. Like, obviously, that's a legend. We all remember that free kick goal against Brazil. Really beautiful goal. And Danny, like, before the Barcelona, before the Madrid, before the Manchester, this is a soccer that we would watch as kids, man. So these are this is a very special moment for us. And Ramoncito's not wearing shin guards or lawn socks. It's a good day. We're just out here to have fun. It's nice to see Almeida. The, the last championship we had was 2016, and he was the head coach. He's the head coach at the Earthquakes right now. So it's just a two-hour drive, and he's playing with Chivas right now. And then here's Baby Shark with the ball. He's going up. Go. Penetrating in from the side. Let's see if we can get the pass. We got it. Paris Martin with the oh. shot, but great block by Chivas. 1839 is going to prepare for a corner. I feel like today is a big proving ground for 1839, Danny. Nothing is going to be short for them. I feel like at almost any point in time, they know – the legends of Chivas, they can really come and just knock the ball in any way that they choose. Danny. Yeah, that, that was, was Johnny Magallon going for that slide tackle, giving us moments of his glimpse mm -hmm. of victories from that 2006 team, too. He did not care if this is turf. He went in there for that slide tackle with his mm -hmm. life, just if it, it was a championship game here, too. But let me give you guys the roster for 1839 themselves. Their starting lineup uh, in the back, starting goalkeeper, Carlos Ayala, number two, Ian Ruiz, number three, Paul Ramsey, number four, Alvaro Carreras, number seven, Luis Ramirez, number 11, Sal Gomez, 13, Marco Monzo, 14, Luis Mendoza, 16, William Bonara, the Brazilian, 18, Balón Vasquez, 19, Perez Martins. This is the same roster that kind of came off uh, from their last season uh, not too long ago, two weeks ago, actually, in their semifinal. It's pretty much the same roster, obviously, Balón starting this time. That's impressive. And uh, William, uh, the Brazilian, Bonora, making his appearance after having a, a minor injury during the season, leaving him out. But I'm glad to see him back. And on the bench, we have uh, Ryan Johnson. And check this out, guys. You guys won't believe it. Jimmy Conrad wow. is on the bench for Napa 1839. Uh, <laughs> he was looking for the revenge oh. to go against El Emperador. But watch out. <laughs> Medina <laughs> coming in. Now we have over here... Tilón, and we Ramoncito. see Ramoncito Morales. Ramoncito levanta la cabeza, okay, saca centro. And 1839, Mendoza right here. Ramoncito could make something happen here. Magic. Magic with his left foot. Naturally just playing it comes an electric feeling. And we see Almeida now playing with the ball. Oh. Man, he still got the skill. Very beautiful soccer by the legends. And it looks like everyone wants to be on Ramoncito's side, coming oh, with yeah. his center, trying to cross. Yami, yeah, mean, I was just going to say the last people here, Gary Tobar also with Eric Vargas, Manny Maravilla, Brian Marin, Marco Reyes, number 29, Alex Sendejas, and 40, Fede Cortez as a backup goalkeeper, and Mark Corbett actually making an appearance on the bench for 1839. So we see them coming up in here, and we see Salcido there pulling his move. That's definitely his character. Yami, yeah, how you feeling? I know you're a great uh fanatic of the Mexican uh, team here, but how you feeling on this night, which uh, all these spectators are expected for all these legends to score at least one goal tonight, which I think we will see. I feel like it does. Well, you know, you know me, Danny. I'm a real, I'm a real classic individual. Sometimes things do come down to the support that they have. Uh, 1839's crowd is going to need to give them all the support that they need. Just looking between the dividend, it is very much a 50-50 split. I even think that Chivas oh, have the majority the just slightly. You know, there is a lot of support coming from the Napa area, but they understand that they have a very hard outfit going against them. And as you can see, just from the last attack, Chivas are going to be very patient with the ball. They're going to be very understanding of the game, and they're going to allow Napa to really kind of come in and, and invite the attack because I feel like they are kind of mature enough and ready for that to come back, to come about, you know. But for the Napa team and themselves, if if the crowd isn't there to support them, we might not have, be able to see those goals. So, yeah, like I said, it does come down to how well the, the crowd does support the team. Danny. Yeah, man, and then for the squad of Chivas... I know we see him with, with no lawn socks, but there's been two challenges already where they go where they go pretty hard. He, the boy Salcido, the two fouls already in this game, and Almeida just went in with a really hard challenge. 
And then for Napa, our season just ended against Sherlock in the semifinal. I believe the score was 2-0. And Academia Sherlock, they won the whole thing. They beat San Francisco 2-0 in the final. So good luck to Academia when they go on to Nationals. He received. And of course, I think I don't want to think again at Napa 1839, the whole crew, the whole staff from the bottom up. Eric, owner Housley, thank him for uh, making this opportunity for us, both uh, the commentators up here and the people in Napa that very much, I'm sure, are grateful for this great opportunity to see once in a lifetime again uh, these legends. As we see here, number seven, Ramon Ramirez. I remember when he had long hair, now he has short hair, so that's kind of of a new look. And this is Tilon, the coach for La Leyendas, but he's actually playing today. He's the one that made this happen for them. But obviously the social media power came through when we saw and heard about Almeida wanting to play for them. And here we see Alberto Medina with his classic step overs. Yeah, Chivas being really patient on the outside, but making that penetrating Medina, pass. Medina, Medina. Going in. Great save by Carlos Ayala. Very commanding in the back. Understanding how the game was going to build up and was expecting that pass. Now we have 1839 coming on the counter. The crowd is getting very electric. They understand that Chivas have came to play, but they are in no rush. They are taking all 90 minutes they, they are afforded. Danny, how do you feel about that first attack? Yeah, Alberto El Venado Medina, age 38, one of the youngest guys out here from Culacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. Medina made his professional debut for Chivas on August 8th. 2000 at 17 years old and won an award for most promising player Alberto Medina we've all seen him we all know him as a fast-paced uh, left winger or right winger that could shoot with a left and right he scored uh, 54 goals for Chivas from 2000 to 2012 making 323 appearances and for Mexico 56 appearances with six goals this guy is a tremendous legend he's already marked his numbers and uh I'm really grateful to see him here tonight and giving us that magic right away. I'm sure he's going to be the one expecting balls to go to him on a run because he's still fit. He played with Coraz de Tepic not too long ago in 2017, still mm -hmm. having his run. So very active guy. You could definitely tell wow. he's, been, he's not been off the treadmill or anything like that. He still trains, I believe so, if you follow him mm -hmm. on social media. So that's Alberto Medina. Great, great numbers and stats, Chewy. And already Walter with some really bad calls, you know, but that's expected. But here we have Alberto Medina. He just stopped playing in the second division of Mexico just two years ago. And here's a counterattack. Alberto Medina, the same player. Yep, he's good. Let's see what he does against Ian Reese. Uh, Walter again with the questionable call. But Walter just wants to put on the show. That was Salvador Caramona. Making that play, he hasn't played in a very long time. Unfortunately, he was banned from FIFA uh, for the anti-doping crisis. But it's a, a long rumor that that was actually not true. Just how they told Salcedo he was on, uh, he didn't pass his anti-doping test. But it was a fail, a fail part from the laboratory. So that's a that's a bad way to end his career. But obviously, knowing everyone the truth that that wasn't the case, and he's out here having fun just like everyone else. And Medina's coming in with the pace now. Walter can't call this offsides. He's coming at full pace with Ian Ramsey, the Sacramento Republic defender. And Sonoma State player. And Sonoma State player now. Ramoncito asking for it, and he's played various, various different positions. And here we see El Emperador Chivas taking his take touch. Chivas are and taking Reynoso, the man himself, with his questionable defending, but everyone loves him. Scored that goal against America in 2007. Probably his most memorable goal from about 50 yards out. And we see there Chava not being able to get that pass too. And Marco Monzo here going all out. Goalkeeper still out of his box. Gets across in 1839. And that was Carrera trying to find the goal, Johnny Magallon making his presence felt. This is this back line is historic. Historic. So much numbers. I believe around 300 games total with Chivas and the Mexican national team. 
And for those that, that don't know and are tuning in, Chivas is only a contract Mexican player, so everyone here is Mexican except for Almeida, of course, but everyone loves him. He clicked with the with the whole fans. The whole fan base said, you might as well be Mexican as well. They're engraved in his heart and vice versa. And we see him there going back, running at full pace, running in and defending. And Tilon there, calling his goalkeeper, making his sure he's in a stable condition. Yami. Chivas are taking vast control of the pitch. Even defensively, you can tell that they're well organized, making the most minimal and effective movements, and really making 1839 work offensively and defensively. I know uh, that Baby Sal, or, yeah, we had Baby Sal just break up a, a good attack just going on from Chivas and get the counter in, but you know, to little to no luck. Press previously, we had the goalkeeper go out for an outside of the box save, lost his cap, almost led to a goal, but the defensive back line really kept it back. You can definitely tell that, you know, give it another 10, 15 minutes, the intensity is really going to rise, and we might see a result coming from either end. It's it's honestly too close to tell, and it's very uncertain. Napa Valley might end up just working hard enough to make that opening result for the game, but it's still cl too close to tell. Yeah, and we see here. Carlos Salcido changing his shoes. Perhaps uh, he didn't like them. It's too hot. He's getting used to it. But Johnny Magallon here, he once played left back. And he's playing left mid now, I think, waiting for Salcedo. And yes, he sees Salcedo now. Salcido with the ball now. Does a little step over. Watch out. Watch out because he could be dangerous with that left or right foot. And he's alone again. Takes a touch. Finds Chava. Chava isn't able to control. And Ramoncito can take the shot. Tries to lob Mansana. Mansana's there. Very controlling from the left side. Managed to open up the play and almost get the goal. Very flashy with this touch too. Opened up his space against Paris Martins. You don't you don't really see that too much against Paris. You know, he's normally very, you know, concise and constructive in the back, but today he just fell apart on that play. Yeah, definitely. And what you see here coming now, obviously. The legends themselves aren't going to be running too much. They're going to be playing it smart. They're playing with their technique. And we see here one of the fastest guys from Napa, Martins, going attack on them. And it looks like Napa's actually kind of holding back too. I haven't seen too much intensity from them. But, uh, you know, maybe they talked about it. It's like, hey, let, he's, let us play a little bit. Let, us, let this be fun for us. Don't go too hard on us. But the legends, obviously, their capacity... Is definitely there still with their technique, as we saw El Emperador doing a little fake coming out the back, and he's asking for the ball now. Reynoso, knowing for him coming out the back. And we see Napa not pressuring. What do you think Napa has to do, or do you think the result for them is winning, or... Or actually, just tying the game, Choi and Yami. I'm asking you guys these both this question. Um, I think they're just here to have fun. But around the second half, I do see Napa scoring two or three goals. I know that Chivas. I mean, they really experienced players. We got some World Cup players right here, right? About like six or five or what? Yeah. Yes, we do. We do. Omar Esparza. He played for Mexico. Uh, U17 in 2005. Uh, part of that World Cup with uh, Gio Dos Santos and Carlos Vela. And we see Almeida there fighting his colors. Yeah, and then I remember uh, 2007, and here we have a counterattack. It's Tilon Sanchez in the right wing against Baby Sal, who just had a trial with Galaxy. Back to Ramoncito. But yeah, in 2007, Salcido, I think he won, I think it was with... A Bundesliga, right? In 2007, it was him, Osorio, and I forgot who Pavel else. Pardo. Yeah. Pavel Pardo, yeah. Salcido was part of that golden era with all those players uh, playing with PSV. He's, he had 121 appearances with three goals. And uh, at that time, he was going through his best moment in football. And then after that, of course, he went with uh, Fulham and tried the Premier League out over there and returned to Mexico later in 2012 uh, with Tigres, where he won there too. And, uh, man, this guy just has a lot of history. 
And it's a foul in favor of Las Chivas. You know, coming into the game, I did expect set pieces to be a very contribute or very vast contributing factor to what the score line might be. Uh, the the way that the fitness rate is going, the way that the heat is brewing, you can definitely tell Chivas are gonna want patience on their goal. They haven't really, you know, put the most effort uh, when it comes to when it comes to the physical, you know, outstanding points when it comes to the running. But when it comes to that pass, when it comes to that final touch, when it comes to just making the most with the minimal effort, Chivas are very much in line of that. So they go ahead and they set up for the free kick on the outside, going for a shot. And just outside, Monsanto's going to set up for the goal kick to get us reset. And of course, you see there, uh, everyone wanted to see Ramoncito Morales score because he's known for that curve. And like you said, against Brazil, scoring that goal and, and beating them, uh, 2-0, everyone remembers that. What a goal, what a celebration, what a time. And we have him here now playing on this field, marking in his territory. We see here Camarena taking that cross, and Martins is there. I'm not sure if uh, maybe perhaps the 1839 players might be a little nervous playing against some of their idols. I know Balon Vasquez, he loves Chivas. He's a Chivas fan, and uh, this is a dream come true for him, uh, playing next to these legends. We see him there roaming around the area. Having the captain badge for Napa. And the refs here too. <laughs> Making this point, we have the local Walter, which everyone knows here in, in Napa. Him making his debut here with some legends too. I'm sure this moment is going to be memorable for him. As he calls his classic uh, calls here. Where we say, hmm, perhaps that was not offsides, Walter. And we see him even going in the match now. Look at that. He's trying to clock in as a as a center. Center ref. See Ramosito Morales taking a cross in second post. We see Manzana there taking control of the ball. Him being a factor and Johnny Magallon right away. I'm just so happy to see all these players here, Chuy. I know uh, you're a big Chivas hand of, as well with your family. Uh, what what are you feeling right now in these current moments? Man, at the beginning, I was done at the field. Then when they first came out, I had some a lot of goosebumps on my arms and my legs because, like I said, before the Premier League, before La Liga, this is a team that we all grew up watching, and these are all just a lot of legends for us. There's Salcido, there's Venado, Amoncitos, and they're. They're actually doing a pretty good game. I'm surprised. I thought that we would for sure have some goals already. But there's a lot of class in the back. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of World Cups, a lot of trophies. But we'll see how the, the game goes. And now we see Napa finally hit some possession for the last 25 minutes. It's been Chivas. But here we have Perez down the wing. See if he crosses it. Anything yeah, there's Johnny Magallon, still very solid, like back in the days. One of the best defenders to play. It also was a bit questionable, but like you said, Danny, a lot of great goals, right? A lot of great goals. Johnny Magallon uh, paired up with Carlos Salcido as well and Reynoso back in the day. And playing for Mexico as well for the senior team, he made his debut in uh, 2007 as well. Very skillful. He looks fit too right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm double checking right here. What his stat is this, but obviously he played for uh, Leon and uh, Mineros de Zacatecas. It was his last team that he played with. And, and on January 18, 2007 is actually when he made the national team under uh, head coach Hugo Sanchez giving Johnny Magallon his first call up to the Mexican national team. Uh, played his first, first game on that year against Venezuela, winning 3-1. He was a player with the most minutes in 2007 CONCACAF Gold Cup and 2007 Copa America, being the protagonist in which he scored both goals in the 2-2 draw against the United States, coming back from behind on both occasions. Yami. And we have 1839 setting up for a corner after a very questionable slide tackle, I will admit, although very secure from the Chivas players. So now we are going in to look from this corner coming in. 
And good hands from the keeper, man, just to get two fists on it, sends it out. And then Chivas almost with the counter attack. Our defensive back line from 1839 manages to recover. And it seems like we're going to go in for another attack. There we go, bringing it in from the left side. There we go, finds it to Marco Monzo. Still playing out wide, just sent it in, and we get a goal! Very good goal from number seven, Baby Shark. Baby Shark, the top goal scorer for Napa Valley, finds the back of the net early already. And his shot, obviously, he played for Chivas back in the day when he was a, a young boy, worked in their reserves, and that's crazy now that he's, he's uh, scoring on them. I'm not sure if uh, perhaps back in the day Ramoncito Morales was actually in charge of those uh, basic forces and maybe perhaps uh, they connected right here. But Ramoncito saying, come on guys, pick it up. But there he is, the top goal scorer for Napa, making his presence felt. Baby Shark, man, what a great left shot. Uh, yeah, that was a beautiful cross by Marco Monzo down wide. And now we have the crowd saying Chivas trying to pump out the legends. That was really... The only way that I saw the goal coming, a really good ball behind a cloud of sweat is back. And Baby Shark, just like he did all season, he scored the first goal for Napa. Now let's see how he respond. Could Definitely a top goal scorer's attribute. He even at the celebration did a simple one, just put up a tally. One, it seems like he's going to go in for a couple more. As we said, he played for Chivas in his, in his younger days, so maybe this is just a little bit more practice for him. You know, 1839 might really have to depend on the ability of Baby Shark, so let's see how the rest of the game progresses in. Yeah, let's see how the game progresses, and Chivas is going to go uh, demanding uh, some attack now, and like we said, Aldolfo, Al oh, there he is, actually, Martin's getting back, but uh, Medina... He has to make uh, for sure the attack pop up on his feet since he is probably the fastest guy that Chivas has. And Magallon keeping up with uh, right here, Ramirez. Ramirez is getting a cut there on Chava. I Napa playing with Stahl and the Brazilian Willie Bonoda oh. takes a shot, misses. Almost going in for a second. I think the fitness levels are starting to show. You do see a bit of fatigue going on the Chivas players and a bit more you know, accountability that is going, that's leaning on per, per player. You know, 1839 almost put a second one back fairly quickly. I think Las Chivas are really going to have to recollect themselves if they want to make a stamp in this game. Danny. Yeah, the goalkeeper Gustavo Sedano from Guadalajara, Jalisco himself, born in 1974. He's currently the one, the man in charge in the back. He played with the Club Deportivo de Guadalajara, obviously. Uh, recently, his last... Uh, team he played with was Club Tijuana where he retired but he had an amazing season as well he wasn't obviously the starter because back then we had Osvaldo Sanchez and Talavera which was really competitive really at the time he saw barely any minutes but uh, I'm glad he got called up and he's making that presence uh, for Chivas and helping them out uh, in today's match but uh, he's been coming out a little bit questionable he probably feels that spirit that I could be able to stretch run back and make a save and we see him there again going for the ball but that's good. There he is. Uh, but, yeah, we already saw him got taken on by William, and that was going to be a nice play as we saw some flicks and some heels from Napa. Uh, they're playing their game, their style, and obviously they're in a great shape. They just came off season uh, barely two weeks ago, so we're going to see a lot of running from them. They're not going to get tired. They're, they're used to running up and down in the last games that we saw them against El Farolito and Sacramento Gold. These guys were giving it their all. Yeah, there's about, like, 10 to, like, 15 minutes left in the half, right? I believe so, yeah. We actually don't have a countdown at the very moment, but we're about 30 minutes in, 35, I believe so. I can't even see the monitor at this time, but, I mean, for all I care, I want to see the ball rolling the whole time right now, just taking and embracing this moment. But, man, it is hot, 97 degrees still probably. And we see Almeida still going for those light tackles. That's the second tackle he does where it's a really strong challenge. And that's what we want to see, honestly. Very strong challenge. No, yeah, I believe, uh, oh, we're getting a nice breeze right now. But I believe uh, the Chivas players uh, aren't used to this heat, definitely. Uh, some of them still in Mexico uh, doing a little bit of training camps here and there, helping yeah. the youth of Mexico, which is what is needed definitely right now for 
uh, the Mexican team to rise and they're doing their part in uh, helping them out as doing these camps. But here we see Paris Martins one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper Gustavo Sudano. And uh, that's the end of first half that's or what did you call it? That's halftime right there. End of halftime. Napa 1, Tivas Leyenda 0. This is going to be an entertaining second half because we still have Jimmy Conrad on the bench and Mark Corbett and other legends from the Chivas side making their debut and right here we see el emperador kind of talking to everyone like hey pick it up guys and i'm sure they're going to be uh coming up strong in the second half Chuy. oh yeah um i expect to see a lot more goals it's 1-0 right now but i believe the score will end 3-2 i don't know who but we'll for sure see some more goals and then with the air quality let's see if that affects the mexican players as well because as you know he got some fires up the up the valley around the sacramento area in Lake Tahoe, so so hopefully the smoke doesn't affect us too much, but it's for sure out here right now. Yeah, definitely. The score line isn't fair to the tail tonight. I feel like we are just getting started at the end of this first half, so I'm super excited to see how the teams are going to recollect themselves, see where 1839 is going to keep progressing, see where Chivas are going to recollect themselves and really start to put their name on or start to put their name on the score line and see how this progresses out. Yes, we'll leave you guys here with the great images of everyone here at the stadium. And we'll be back to continue this show. And we'll leave you. Thank you guys for joining us again. Stay tuned for the second half as we see the legends hydrate themselves here. Thank you guys.
looks like that was a false alarm right here. I thought the ref had blown the whistle for halftime, but that was just a hydration break right here. We got to hydrate too, Tui. How do you feel? Uh, yeah. I, I said the air quality isn't the best. We're like at 129, but yeah, we got a water break. I went down there to the field to, to see the vibe. It's way cooler down there, but the fans, they seem to be enjoying it right here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we got to keep this up, you know. Um, 1839's keeping the attack going immediately right after the water break. Uh, Marco Monzo starting up the attack, letting, leading off with Baby Shark to put an end result on it. But now we got them set up for a corner. You know, I feel like the hydration break was only essentially needed for, for the Chivas, considering that they're not really used to the conditions due to the smoke and the heat. Danny, how do you feel about this uh, oh, this recovered corner? How do you feel that Chivas have to really recollect themselves coming this after this hydration break? No, they definitely needed that. As we see a foul here clear by Ian, can't can't do anything about that. But once El Venado Medina was going to turn on that, he was going to be gone. But no, yeah, definitely. I think they needed this, and uh, so did Napa, I'm sure. Uh, as we did mention, uh, there's some fires around here in the Napa Valley, and the air quality isn't the greatest, but it's obviously better than in other parts of the Bay Area and Northern California. And we see Salcido here trying to find Ramoncito making his first sprint, I believe so. His classic walk. I, I just love how he how he walks, how he carries himself. He's ready to just shoot whenever he wants. And he looks like he stepped up a little bit and we see Almeida here checking right away. There we go, Napa Valley really taking control after this first goal. You haven't really seen too many opportunistic plays coming in from Chivas. I know we had the foul coming in after the corner, but you know, to no end product. Here we go, we have Paris Martins coming in from the side, sending in a ball. Comes the Baby Shark, let's see what he does, but it gets recovered by Chivas. Now they come in, let's see how they play out wide, coming in on the left, on their left attacking side. There we go, plays it back center. Back. See Almeida poured probably a gallon of uh, water on his head just to fully refresh. And we hear here a foul as they pump out the crowd with some songs from Guadalajara themselves, Jalisco. And man, these players, this is their specialty right here. They could either cross, as we've seen Ramoncito Morales do it before, or they could shoot with Medina or Salcido. Yeah, the set pieces coming in from Chivas have been dangerous thus far. And here you see the ref going ahead and issuing that yellow card. Is it Ian Reese that he gave it to, number two? Yes, and then now Chivas are setting up from this free kick on their left attacking side, just waiting on the clearance of space coming in from the uh, coming in from the referee right now to approve it. About one or two more steps back coming in from Napa Valley as they set up for this free kick. Let's see how Mansana composes himself. They play out wide, Reynoso open man, they get the and shot, goal. and it hits off the top Pelota crossbar, Pelota it's Pelota not Pelota dead. Pelota Manzana Pelota comes Pelota in, puts in overtime in the goalkeeper's box, saves from the left, saves from the right, Pelota keeps 1839 alive, and as they go ahead and try to recollect on the back, Las Chivas go and collect another foul. Coming in on the left side. Coming in from this time from Marco Monzo. As you can tell, it's very much how the game is played. Shook hands, walked it off, and they're going to keep the play going. It seems that 1839 is going to start up the play this time. My mistake, but here we go. We have them collecting in from the, from the center back on the left-hand side. Playing up to the 40. Playing back. This defensive line is going to keep it compact. And now we're going to play out wide. What is it? We have Luis Mendoza carrying it over to the opponent's 50. Finding Marco Monzo into some space with an excellent chip to no end result, just fairly wide. Las Chivas goalkeeper putting in an excellent run to make sure that he does not have the angle. They're going to go ahead and start up a goal kick. Chewy. And if you see on the south goal, we now have in a Liverpool jersey, the boy Jimmy Conrad. Jimmy Conrad making his appearance big here. I see Eric Housley, owner, escorting here like the legend that he is. 
And no, right here the emotions beat me and True, I believe so. When we saw Reynoso with that volley, I was I was getting vibes of 2006 in, again. Man. Yeah, I thought that was in. Hits the crossbar, comes in. Ian Tuxedo. saves it with his face. And also, Manzanita is able to get a hand on it. But now we see Chivas a little bit more passion, a little bit more heart, and coming in and finding opportunities. Truly. Yeah, and it's going to be very interesting. In the, oh, he did have a good touch. Or Divas did have a good touch towards goal, but a little bit wide, a little bit too much. Monsanto was able to go in, and Frank, quite frankly, I feel like the goalkeeper was doing his job protecting himself. What do you feel, Danny? I did feel that, but it was uh, Almeida. If he did have VAR right here, would be able to see a little bit more. But Almeida does touch the ball over uh, goalkeeper here, Montanita, and isn't able to... Uh, take that offensive side and it looks like Salcido is actually getting the ball here to take it. Who could it be? Is it Salcido, Ramoncito? We have all these legends, but it looks like Almeida is going to be fine. Let's see who is this. There's so many players that could take this here. So many legs in question to put an end result on this as we still have Manzana with this clean sheet. You know, 1839 have had very big struggles keeping a clean sheet this season, but I do believe that the air is electric for them tonight, and if Monsana is able to perform, we might be able to save this penalty and maybe make another product, uh, product end result on the opponent's half. But as it stands right now, we do have a very questionable outcome for seeing ahead of us. Danny. Let's get ready for this memorable moment here. Ramoncito Morales stepping down. And stepping up to the plate for his classic left foot shot. He scores 70 of these penalties. Let's see how Manzanita is going to be able to take it. Ramon Morales from 12 yards. Arch, take the shot right into the left post of Manzana. And Walter says Manzana is off his line. It's going to be a repeated penalty kick. And this has happened to Ramoncito Morales in his career where he misses. And then he gets another opportunity. So... Let's count back. But he already tried it. Chewy, what did he think about that shot? Ah, and here we have Walter again. He wants to be the star of the show, but it's okay. Now we see Ramoncito Morales with the second try, but Manzana is really good at seven PKs. Here we are. Ramoncito, Manzana, Ramoncito, Manzana! Two block PKs on Manzana, what a beast. Americanista himself is not going to be too easy to score on him. And there's a very big saying in almost every sport, the ball never lies. I don't think it was a deserved PK. I think those were two well-deserved saves. And I think it just goes to show that if they want a goal, they're going to have to earn it, Las Chivas. As you see them coming in for their corner, we'll see if they kind of understand the tempo that 1839 have come to play, but they have came to win. Danny. Yes. As we see here, Ramoncito Morales, he played... 382 games with Chivas scoring 66 goals and with Mexico he played 64 games scoring six goals and uh, I believe out of all those uh, goals at least 20 were PKs but in Bro. this case Montana was there to deny the legend himself to be honest I was expecting a chip or a little just place on the left side how like he would usually do I don't I don't remember the PKs being that hard a man would always just chip it down the middle or a light pass. Two saves PKs, but now we have a counter. Elon Sanchez, good cross to nobody. And Monsana having an excellent game tonight. This first half, I definitely want to give him man of the match. I know 1839 has had a goal, but he's had two denied penalties. I feel like that's just as equally valid between both ends. You know, being a keeper is one of the hardest positions in the sport. And to come against names like this and a team of this outfit is very very uh very very hard it's a very hard outfit or it's a very hard a task to do so respects to Monsana for able to keep his composure in the back being able to keep the team alive and hopefully we can progress and maybe get another goal yeah Monsana keeping a clean sheet definitely for napa and being a big protagonist now but as far as the game goes who do you guys think uh, give me a player from napa and a player from chivas that have been uh outgoing and performing very well i think for me at least even though we have a lot of legends here uh salvador uh, carmona number 18 here he keeps winning some balls he's got some eggs he got some step over his class is definitely still there 
Uh, I know he hasn't played in a couple years now, so he's Monzo making this show for it. From the right, finding Baby Sal, fakes, still takes his shot, and it just goes wide. Baby Sal should have taken that shot. He had the perfect left foot. He's a left foot naturally. He takes a, a step back and tries to shoot with his right. I'm not sure if his uh, his nerves got to him there, but he had the perfect shot to switch it to the second post. And we see here a substitution for Mansana after doing two saves. And Feather coming in now, giving him a chance for a special moment of him. He's had a great career here in Napa too, and I'm sure this is a highlight of his career playing for Chivas itself. Let's see what happens here because Manzanita did keep Napa at a clean sheet. Very surprising sub, Danny. I, I wouldn't expect him to go off very shortly after making those two saves. You know, I do hope everything's all right health-wise. Other than that, you know, very good first half from the goalkeeper, Manzana. You know, let's hope we get another goal from 1839 as they come in with a penetrating pass to no end result. Gets collected by the keeper. But yeah, like I was saying, you know, very surprising substitution. Coming into the next following minutes, this goalkeeper, Feather, is going to really have to prove himself if he wants to keep up with the level of speed that's been going. Chewy, anything, any remarks on that? I mean, it's a special moment for Feather. Um, remember the days him and Napa High, a really great keeper. I think that there's three keepers, so I think they're just going to switch off every now and then. But I think they all go for America, right? I don't know about Feather, but for sure... Manzana loves America. I think Feather might be an America fan. And it's a great story because Feather just came back from an ACL. Here we have Ramajito Morales against Ian Reese. We've seen a couple of fouls against this matchup already. Beautiful cross goal. Ah. Rear miss by Venado Medina. Remember those days seeing Ramajito Morales in the wing. Beautiful curving pass to Venado. El Bofo. El Bofo's not here. I wish he was here, man. I want to see that bald head, right? Oh, yeah, when I heard Leyendas coming, I thought El Bofo was going to be here, but he's a busy guy. He's a great figure. And I was, uh, like we talked about it, Osvaldo Sanchez isn't here either, but uh, these players are still making a presence. And uh, Matias Almeida and El Emperador, too, are probably the most outstanding ones here making a name for themselves. And we see El Emperador oftentimes on Fox Sport with John Laguna, and Rodolfo Landeros. There we go. 1839 coming in with another attack. Luis Mendoza finding Baby Shark, but getting called offside inches, inches away from making a promising attack. Las Chivas have been doing a lot of defensive work tonight. Not something that was very much expected between the crowd and pretty much the players and themselves. I, I understand that, you know, they are not as in the same conditioning or, you know, at the same rate or same playing rate that, you know, these 1839 players are coming in, but... You know, Las Chivas is definitely a brand of pride and it's definitely a club where they take a lot of, you know, they take almost every football match as seriously as, you know, at any level, you know, high or low. They take it very seriously. Danny. Yeah, I'm still trying to, I lost perce perception of time here. I'm not sure how long are we going to if they added another 10 minutes after that water break. But uh, second half should be coming up any second now. And we see here Medina switching to the right side. Taking a touch in for Johnny Magallon. Medina again now. He could get in. He does a step over. Looks for a fake. Finds Johnny Magallon for the shot. Takes it to the second post of Fede. And it wasn't a well-calculated, accurate shot for Johnny Magallon here. But we can expect a lot from a defender right here. But he did go up a couple times and had his moments back in his day, Choi. And it's the same story as always with Chivas. We played nice soccer, but we never we never tend to finish, right, Danny? So let's see in the second half if we're more clinical up top. Uh, there we have Ballon. He just gave the ball away, but it's good to see Ballon play. We didn't really get to see him much in the season, but he's a huge Chivas fan, so it's nice to see Coach Mark giving the Napa Legends some minutes. Pretty sure we're going to have halftime in the next couple minutes, so next couple seconds. <laughs> Great way to end the first half. Napa Valley 18-39-1. Las Chivas, Cero. Danny, uh, thoughts on the first half? Yeah, definitely. The players are just getting a hold of the field, trying to 
get adjusted to this turf and this weather. So thank you guys for tuning in this first half now as we continue with this great exhibition match between the Chivas Leyendas and Napa Valley 1839. We'll see you guys back in the second half as we cut with a short break. Thank you.
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second half of this spectacular atmosphere that we're living here in Napa. And that's Marco Monzo kicking it to Jimmy Conrad right there, making his appearance late, but well enough for everyone to applaud him. And he's going right away to check El Emperador Claudio Suarez and their classic uh, rivalry. And we see here right away, Jimmy Conrad looking up for it. He's looking in shape. The autor of Que Golazo. And this is Jimmy Conrad scoring right away in the first minute. But Walter's calling it offsides. Jimmy Conrad celebrating it. Jimmy Conrad is furious now. He was coming in like nothing, saying, here I am. Here's my goal. And he could have easily gone home. But Walter making his call. Yami, what do you think about that? Uh, I seen it early on. Jimmy Conrad sent, or got the pass so, in. Once he started breaking in, I seen him drop right below the defender. Although Walter made a very questionable offside call, I don't get to see everything his eyes get to see, so I don't get to make the calls that he gets to make. So unfortunately, it still stands 1-0 at the start of this second half, but the air is nothing short of electric. Jimmy Conrad excited to be here. Easily can say he wants to put his name on the score sheet, you know, and really have something to prove tonight. Yeah, that was a very special moment for Napa. Uh, man, Jimmy scored, but once again, Walter needs to be a face of the show and cause offsides, which is very questionable because the pass came back. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see Jimmy score a, a couple more goals as Chivas players. They tend to slow down a bit, and Jimmy looks in shape, right? Yeah, Jimmy looks like he's just running in, looking for opportunities right away. And there he is with the touch right away back to Carrera. Jimmy going back for it, fighting for it, and Ramoncito now yeah, loses the ball a little bit. Yummy. Definitely making an impression these first couple minutes in, Jimmy Conrad. Let's hope he has enough to keep up with the tempo of these 1839 players. If they manage to do that, we, we have a couple goals coming in this second half just the, on the rate of the tempo. But we do get Chivas with the substitution. Almeida coming off with a great standing ovation. The legend himself that became in 2017 and won the hearts of millions of Mexicans and Chivas aficionados. So now he's coming off. Maybe he might go back in, but he's calling it off early for now. And Amaury Ponce comes in with number 14, making his first appearance here tonight in this exhibition match. We are achieve us to start up the play again after that substitution. Sergio Amaro y Ponce from Tepic, Mexico. Allá por Nayarit. 5-9 coming in. He played with Chivas from 2009 to 2010 with 29 appearances and four goals. And played for Mexico in 2008 with two appearances only. But he had a nice majority of his career in Guadalajara itself playing with Aklas uh, from 2012 to 2014. So he's always been there making a presence in Guadalajara. And we see Reynoso here fighting off the back. Luis Mendoza with the recovery. And then 1839 with the go-ahead shot off the top crossbar. Jimmy Conrad to pick it up. Let's see what we can make of it. Oh, and then uh, Las Chivas with a great recovery. Such a shot from 1839. They really want to put another goal on the score sheet. They understand that Chivas are coming in with almost anything that they can bring to the table, which is still a lot at the end of the day. Ramosito Morales with the shot, chips it in. Oh, Fede, what a goal! Ramosito Morales! Fine space, like the classic 2006 times in the Apertura 2004, 2005, 2006. What a goal, what a goal, what a goal. Medina with the heel flick. Ramoncito Morales finds space, chips. Federico. Such Cortes. a goal coming what in a from goal. Las Chivas. Se la comió Fede, se la comió. What a chip by Ramoncito taking us back to his days. Man, just like I said, I don't know why the PK, it should have been a chip like that master class that he did, 1-1 one, one here. A beautiful game in Napa. There we are in 1839 to set the kickoff again. 
putting a bit of more tempo into it. They understand that Las Chivas are going to come in with a very, very smart game of play. That shot didn't take a lot of effort, just put a lot of thought process to it, put a perfect touch to it, and made sure that they made the most of it. Danny, what's your thoughts on that first goal? No, definitely. And it was Amaury Ponce making his first touch of the game that started that play. And Ramoncito Morales took, takes that opportunity after Medina connects with him. That chemistry never has been lost. It's been years since they played. And we find them here again doing the same thing they did just about 20 years ago. So Ramoncito Morales takes the time. Like I said, he could shoot still. So just give him the ball and give him some space. And he's going to be dynamite. And here we go again. Say Medina with Ramoncito Morales. Comes at full speed. Ian checking him there. And there Martins go. here with the speed. Trying to take Reynoso. And he does. He comes at full speed. Trying to find Jimmy Conrad now in the top box. Monzo there. But Jimmy Conrad has 6-2 figure. 1839 still with the attack. We have Luis Mendoza to pick it up. Passes it negative with a send in, but Las Chivas go in and get a good stop. No, Napa now has to respond to this as they were taking it lightly. They had more opportunities in the first half, and now second half comes up, and uh, they're getting caught by surprise now. Chivas is doing very well on the spacing. As we saw, they don't have to really have a lot of pace, and it's their experience coming in here. There we go. And 1839 with a shot on just on the clearance from the goalkeeper. To go out wide, it seems that we have another corner. Luis Mendoza setting up. 1839, let's see if they can make the most of this. Definitely now, we see this cross early. Johnny Magallon, impressive, impressive match by him still. And we see Alberto Medina gets fouled down by Sal Gomez. Ref calls nothing on this. Salcido now making his action there. Gets a nice little pass to Amari Ponce. Amari Ponce playing the classic right wing back position that we saw him play in his time with Chivas. And we see here Paris Martins now crossing it to Monzo. Marco Monzo with speed. Finds his touch. Talked to him earlier in the first half. Saying that they're just looking Jimmy for Jimmy Conrad, Conrad with, the with the shot. They're looking for space. They know that the legends here are smart about their decision making. So... They're going to be playing with that, but likely, most likely, we'll see Napa putting in their part. And we see El Emperador, Claudio Suarez, coming in, the legend, for number two. Martinez, making his first appearance, Diego Martinez. He played 18, also 30. right back in his day for the Apertura 2004. 1839 with the send in just going wide. We're going to set up with the keeper for Las Chivas again. Danny, just some couple thoughts to start off this second half. I mean, do, do you feel like Las Chivas can come back and potentially get that game winner in? It, it seems that they're coming in with a very intellectual style of play, not necessarily putting in those immense runs or those big 50-50s, but just finding those acute passes in those tight spaces where they can just really just pop it in and you know make, it, make the difference on the scoreline. Yeah, definitely. There's no two players that came in, Amari Ponce and uh, Diego Martinez are age 40, and they still got some, some good pace because – they used to play right backs and left back position back in their day. So they still look fit to me. So they needed some fresh legs and Chivas. That's what they're getting now. And I said it in the first half. They're going to come out stronger second half. How we see here, Diego himself, Thilon, takes a shot and it's in for Thilon. Finding space. Two, right as one, we talk, two, Thilon one. Chavez. 2-1. Guadalajara is up. This is what the people want to see. Dilon Chavez making his appearance, being part of the Campeón de Campeones in 1997, scoring one of the six goals that they, when they played against Toros Nesa. Aside from Dilon playing recently, he's been named the new Chivas Reserves coach, so he has a strong presence in the community for the Chivas Rayadas and has his foot in there in the door right now. Luckily, he got the day off to come play with these legends. Yami. Yeah, you can definitely see in the faces of Napa Valley 1839 that they're going to really need to pick themselves up. 
I know we had Carlos Ayala who had a very fantastic first half. So let's hope that the keeper can understand the tempo and make sure that we get these saves to kind of keep them alive. It all started from honestly a, a questionable offsides. From that point on, you see Napa put their heads down for just a second. And two goals later, it's a game. Guadalajara's up. Las Chivas are getting the are getting that, you know, are getting that re reaction from the crowd, that electricity, you know, from that reactions that we need. And honestly, we don't know who's really gonna take it, but as it stands, Las Chivas are wearing the crown at the end of the game. <laughs> we see Salcido there trying to <laughs> clip uh, Johnny Conrad, but Johnny Conrad, Jimmy Conrad has his ball now. But true, I know me and you weren't born with Tilon uh, Chavez was playing, but I know your dad talks about him and you know our fathers actually talk about him because that's their era but how do you feel of seeing him now score and how was a classy finish really nice finish on the side and i don't really remember him seeing that much i think that my dad watched him play but yeah he's honestly playing really good it's like the 65th minute and he's still moving as you see right now making the forward sprint he has the ball is about to turn easy pass yeah he's a really nice player there we really go. classy. As the ball steps or gets out of bounds, we have 1839 to pick it back up. And what a turnaround, 2-1 Chivas. Ballon with the ball, sending out wide to Paris Mertens. It could have been 2-0 Napa, but now it's 2-1 Chivas. What an event. This is why we like soccer. There we go. Paris Mertens out wide. Let's see if he can recollect it. Keeps it alive, keeps it alive. Starts to... Oh, Johnny Magallon. With good defensive tackles using their numbers. And 1839 to pick up another throw in, keeping their attack alive. Paris going to Ballon. Ballon to Luis Mendoza. There we go. They're picking up from their right attacking side, but that's short that stopped short by Las Chivas defense. No, so around the 65th minute, I like to see from some subs from the Napa side. We've only made one sub with it's Baby Shark and Jimmy playing in, but there's still a lot of quality on the, the Napa bench. Hopefully we see more players playing. As you see, Napa trying to slow the game down, pass the ball. A change formation. Now we have Johnny Marayon as a pair with Reynoso. That's a throwback to 2007 to the Champions League. Really championship team. Good ball. He's on sides. He's on. He's on. Let's see if Fede could come in huge. Fede, he said no more. Ramosito from half field. Ramosito from half field. Ramosito! No, ya no, ya no. Hace 20 años, sí, pero ya no. Esas piernas ya no le llegan. And there we are, 18:39 to pick up the play again from the back. Man, Danny, so what's your favorite goal from Ramoncito Morales, bro? Ramoncito Morales has to be against America back in uh, 2007 after uh, having the championship, defending the title. He scores on uh, Memo Ochoa off a free kick, and uh, that was an unforgettable moment for sure. And uh, also when he played uh, that 2006 Apertura, though so many goals and so many memories, I would wake up every Saturday and Sunday morning just to see him play. And that's crazy that I see him score now in person. In Napa. In Napa, of course. I would never picture this uh, 10 years ago when I was in high school from this very place where I'm at right now, calling games for our local high school. And now we're here. Uh, almost a decade later, uh, calling games by legends and Salcido going in hard. Luis Mendoza on the left side, getting the attack picked up for 1839. Finds Baby Sal on the on the left. Back to Mendoza, finds the send into Marco Monzo. Amari Posse says no to Marco Monzo there, showing his keeping presence. Keeping the attack alive, we find our center in to no end product. Chivas are having a hard time recollecting the ball and being stable with it, although they do manage to find a ways to progress it upfield. You know, things do seem at the very last tip, the very last touch, and to be quite frank, just that just that bit of luck you, you need in the game. Oh, he's not running for that no more, maybe 10 years ago. And in the back, you see Ponce and Magallon, they're still solid, to be honest. Really good players. Yeah. No, it's... Estos ya no, ya muchas tortillas en mole, la Coca-Cola. A lot of players are in good shape, pero uno sí les gusta la tortilla mucho. There we see El Tlon Sanchez and Salcido. In the last two minutes, they've gotten slight tackles. They really want to win this match. 
Oh, Balón, classy Ballon move. With an excellent maneuver. He has Paris on the other side. Make that switch to Paris. That'd be nice. And then we have Luis Mendoza right now playing with Ian Reese. Those two playing right now are currently at Sonoma State. So we wish them the best this season, and hopefully they have a good season. Luis again controlling it with William. Paris makes the run behind. Really good ball. Could retire. Walter again with questionable offsides. That's two goals from Napa. It could have been 3-2 Napa, but Walter, man, he's been making some calls. And here we have a sub from the Chivas side. Here we see who it is. We have Martinez coming in with number 11. And we have Vasquez coming in as well. Coming out for the Napa side. Ramoncito Morales, as we hear the crowd going crazy. Antilon Sanchez. Hola, Ramon. The crowd getting on their feet. Really big applause for Tilon Sanchez and Ramosito Morales. Then we have Vasquez and Martinez going in. And for Napa, a lot of subs also. We take off Feather the Keeper. We Now we have a lot of locals coming in. We see Alex and Dejas, a vintage grad, played at this field. We have Marco Manzo from Vallejo. We have Brian from San Lina. And we have Manny Maravilla from Vintage as well. It's nice to see the local lads. We have Eric Vargas as well from Napa. All local talent, as you see right now. We have Gary as well from Vintage. Everyone in this field, except for the center back and the left back, are from Napa Valley right now. So it's very exciting to see. A lot of changes coming on on both sides. Let's hope this can get some new life coming in from Napa Valley. They're only down by a goal. So if they manage to make a collective effort, who knows? We, we can have a change up on the scoreline. Yeah, that's Ignacio Vasquez, number nine, coming in. And he was actually here when uh, Napa 1839 played the U23 Chivas team uh, back in 2019. I got his signature, so that's one crossed off out of the many that are here today. But it's nice seeing him play because last time he was just coaching off the stands, but now he's getting in some action. And I believe uh, Manuel Martin Ignigas is the one that also came in. He didn't have his socks either. He's just coming in with looks like turf shoes out there on the left side, taking a spot for Ramoncito Morales. But check this out. Number 10, uh, El Venadito Medina, he's still here. I think he, he still has a lot to show, uh, but he hasn't got the ball. So right now we see this switch. And check out the sprint right here for him. And it's Vargas defending now. Alex, also known as Wong Sendejas, making his appearance. And like you said, yeah, new locals, some from Vintage, some from Napa. It's nice to see them. I'm sure this is a dream come true. This is Maravilla now playing with his swagger, sending a nice, great ball to Mar Martin. Brian Marin, Vela. He also played, starting his career, developed in Mexico with Cruz Azul and Chivas and getting passed around to Pachuca, he said. Making his appearance against... Uh, Chivas here. I'm sure he'll be having some opportunities as he has a great left foot shot. And Manny here trying to win it from Manny Magallon. Magallon said, nope. This is my ball. Let me, let me play my game. And you see here, Vasquez going for that. Vasquez only had two seasons with Chivas. Wasn't able to become a champion with them, but definitely a legend for Chivas back in his day. And he's making an appearance today. And the crowd is still pumped up here. I believe, I would say we have almost 4,000, 5,000 fans. The other side, you guys could clearly see it's still not full. But on this side of the pitch, on the vintage side, it's definitely filled up to the neck. Sivalon here dropping Esparza. And this is Marco Reyes trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. And Manny Maravilla takes a bad touch there, bad technique, and isn't able to hit it right. But he's getting his chance in today's match. Yeah, Ignacio Vasquez, born 1971, from Ign San Ignacio, El Cerro Gordo in Jalisco, played forward as well. Vasquez made his league debut with Chivas in 1991 to the 1992 season. He scored 10 goals in each of the seasons that he played 
leading the club in scoring and winning the center forward position. He also contributed to the team, uh, actually, that won in the Verano 1972 championship where he didn't get much playing time because of injuries, but he's there. He, he, made that, he made that squad. I'm sure we've had instances uh, where we played on the winning team and don't get much playing time, uh, but yet that's still a, a nice feeling to be there present in the moment. And we see here, Medina clocking in, Reynoso still in the back. He played all games of the 2006 Apertura and in only three, he got subbed out. But he played almost every uh, minute of the match in that season. And we see here Salcido. This is Diego Martinez putting his technique in there. And Alex wins it back for Napa. Yami, how are you feeling that Napa's uh, substitutions are playing a factor in tonight's game? Jimmy Conrad still looking for a chance. Yeah, definitely. These substitutions, are, uh, these substitutes know that they're going to have to really adjust and you know, pick up a new style of play when it comes to that. There's a lot of creativity happening in between the, the midfield and the wide play of game. You know, as you see, Paris Martin's coming in with some chances earlier on before he got subbed out, coming in from the wide as we started getting the subs in. You had Marco Reyes coming in with a nice opportunity, had to put a little body in there, managed to get the pass off with no end product. And Manny Manavia won with, you know, what could have been a, what could have been a goal in that last chance that came from Marco Reyes and an excellent run with, Honestly, no end result, but, you know, good effort. So you can understand that they understand the style of play. They realize they're going to have to keep that tempo up and that Chivas might have a lot of control when it comes to that pass game, playing out wide when they have the ball, and they know that they're going to have to adjust. I do hope that this new goalkeeper that got subbed in, you know, manages to keep us secure in the back. I know we had this. This is our now third keeper stepping onto the field and, you know the uh, the the first one or the second one midway through the game, unfortunately had two goals slip back. So let's hope that's not we don't make the same mistake with that. We could progress forward, get that equalizing goal, and potentially see if we can get the game winner. If not, Chivas will seem very secure as we head into this water break. Danny, yes, we see a water break here, and this is going to be a factor for both teams because uh, the sun did go down. It's a little bit chiller now, about uh, 89 Fahrenheit, and uh, Chivas is is up right now with their morale. They're up in the game. They're in this, but with the with the substitutions going on, we're gonna see how Napa reacts to this. There's still a lot of energy. Jimmy Conrad trying to get another shot on goal after what happened in the first minutes of the field. And they gather up for a nice fresh water breeze and as, as us soccer players, we know this is essential for us. We need a little water break. We need to refresh our minds and refresh ourselves physically. Chewy. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, you need, to, you need to talk to your team. There's like 20 minutes left. You got to close out the game. And now we see, we see Brandon Lucas doing some footwork to the vintage legend keeper. Shout out to Brandon. He's a trainer at the college out here with the men's soccer coach on the field. There we see Mark giving some instructions. Let's see if we could come back and win this match. We're down 2-1 with 20 minutes left. So let's see if if Napa could maybe start off the play. It's our local talent that you see on the field now. So we'll see how, how they do against the legends, against Chivas, La Leyendas de Guadalajara. It's a really good vibe out here in the field. They have shout out to Joe Z with the music. Shout out to Carmelo being the announcer. Really, really good job out here. We have Danny. We have Kenny right here to my left and Yami. How are you liking this game, uh, Yami? From a soccer fanatic standpoint of view. I mean, even then, I grew up watching Liga Mekis. I mean, player for player. It doesn't necessarily hold the same position as in my heart as I do see with the crowd, but you know, I'm just loving the atmosphere. I'm loving that we're able to play the beautiful game of soccer, you know, regardless of the conditions. I know we have some fires and some heat all next to COVID, but you know, alongside from that, so long as we're able to come out here, have a good day, be with our families and enjoy our time out playing the beautiful game, 
I couldn't ask for a better day. You know, between the game and itself, it's nothing short of electrifying. Like I said, when the first couple minutes kicked off, you see Chivas understanding the tempo for 1839, coming back in and really making a statement, putting their name on the score sheet, making 1839 work for whatever win that they hope to grab tonight. Danny. Yes, we see here Marco Monzo. He's also a great fanatic of this sport and Liga MX precisely. He went to try out for Tijuana and now he's playing against these idols as well. Uh, I know he loves uh, Chivas and seeing their growth, even though he's not a number one fan. We saw him saying hi to Diego Martinez there. And uh, at this point, anyone on the field, it's, it's definitely an honor to play around these guys that you normally would only see on TV and now... They're here, they're live in person. As we see the, the players, Medina and Sancido joke around, it's a, it's a magical time to be alive definitely tonight and embracing this atmosphere. Yami, as, as I said it, the, the soccer community here in Napa has grown tremendously. Uh, 2013, when I was a senior, I would have never thought uh, of seeing something like this. I mentioned it back then in my senior year, and I'm glad I'm able to see this now, as a, an adult, I would say, even though it's just one night that I'm here for Napa, but I like this. I like this uh, vibe, and I hope uh, we keep having Las Leyendas come, or in this case, it's going to open up doors to other teams like America, like Tigres, like Monterrey, anyone really in the Liga MX. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with the soccer community alongside that, I mean, this isn't the first time that we've had Las Chivas come to Napa. The Veteranos, for sure, this is the first time, but we had the U19s come about three, about almost three years ago now. You know, we had a, um, what was it, I believe a 2-0 result or a 2-1 result. I, I'm, my memory's a little fuzzy, but having these, having these open opportunities to play against these international squads, especially with our neighbors to the south, is giving Napa Valley 1839 that next level experience that we're going to need to progress further. You know, a lot of these players coming in on the team are locals, such like Alex Juan Cardenas, Manny Manavilla, Marco Reyes, Ian Reese, you know, Eric Vargas. You know, a lot of people, even down to the coaching staff, are all locals here. So for them to all band together put 1839 on the map and to be able to play a team of this outfit it's beyond remarkable you would only think you could see this once in a lifetime but seeing the chivas outfit in the city of napa this is now the second time now i can see a third a fourth and progressive multiple times per, uh, past this point you know chewy growing up on and playing on this field did you ever get to think that you would see one of your idols one of your legends be able to score in the same net score in front of the same fans score in front of the same people that you used to put on a good show for no, yeah, I want to give a special shout out to Eric for doing great things in the Valley and allowing this to happen. I never imagined seeing these guys out here, to be honest. This is a dream come true. We have Reynoso, we got Magallon, Salcido still in the starting lineup, and Venado, Ramosito Morales, they scoring on the same field that I played in, and a lot of my, a lot of my friends out here. It's inspiring. It shows you that soccer is here in Napa, it's here to stay, and it's going to keep on growing. Most definitely, most definitely. And as you can say, it's a bit surreal just seeing it from the sidelines, as you can do with the masses here with us. But just imagine being one of the players down there, being able to shake the hand or, you know, even potentially put the body, you know, to stop the play on one of these Chivas players. You know, having a situation or an opportunity like this, 1839 can understand and recognize they're going to need to do everything they can tonight for their fans, and they know that they deserve it. Yeah. It's 2-1, about 20 minutes left in the second half. Let's have a good game. I feel like this is going to be potentially the most exciting 20 minutes of the game considering we know the scoreline, we know the players, and we know the atmosphere most importantly. You know, Chivas fans are definitely here to support. They're not going anywhere. 1839, they definitely need to make sure that they put Golazo Medina! Las Chivas get another goal. Goal! Tres a perfect beauty coming in past the 1839 keeper. Man, I'll tell you what, Danny, Chewy, you give these Las Chivas veteranos just some fresh water, and seconds later you will get results from halftime, from the first water break from the second half. They have done nothing but make great results they think smarter they're not thinking harder and they're making 1839 pay for every moment that they allow them to get 
And I feel that's the reason that Venado still stays on the field right now. He had a volley just like old times. It's been what a great show here today. We've seen Miss PKs. He have Macaraya. He have the boy Macaraya from Vallejo with the cross. Almost. What but a class from Omar Esparza taking that out with the back heel. But I, I mentioned it earlier. Give uh, Medina some space, some time, and he will definitely put that ball away. What a Glimpse volley. moments there of his technique and style. He just got that water, like you said. Yami came off fresh off the bat. First play he gets, makes that goal with his uh, three fingers. The tres dedos, something he did uh, with Mexico a lot. That's how he scored his goals. Yes, and, uh, man, uh, it's an honor to see both Ramoncito Morales and now yes. Al Alfredo El Venado, Venado Medina. Medina. It's scoring crazy. that goal, that is crazy. This game has had it all. We had two missed PKs, we had a chip, and we had a great volley by Bernardo. All we need is one more thing, a uh, red card from Hector Reynoso. Let's see if he, on the boy Manny, because he's an Americanista, and Bella. And also, Danny, a lot of the Napa players, they go for America. Probably say like eight of our, oh, another good ball. There we go, and 1839, mm. Greek collects from the back. As we get the play started again, you can very much understand that 1839 is going to need to earn any goal that they get, and conditions alone might not allow them to make the most opportunities. As you can see early on, we've had multiple questionable offsides calls, yet another one by Walter, as I was just going to say, as he cut me off with another one. You know, I feel like Manny Manavia had a very clean run, and I feel like he was going to make the most of that, but... Walter, like I said, I don't see what he sees. I don't officiate the game that he that he is officiating. So, you know, we can only work with the conditions. And right now, and right now, that seems to be 1839's biggest condition right now. It seems to be the sideline ref coming in on the north side. Danny. Yes, we see a substitution of goalkeepers. I'm not sure who's coming up as a goalkeeper. But we see coach, head coach Mark Corbett. Doing a appearance here for 1839. We see some advertising in the sky. A heart and an A. I wonder who that's for. But we see Mark here making a connection with Jimmy Conrad. Doesn't able, isn't able to connect with him right there. Stays with the press. Salcido now. They're going to be playing their game. They're up in Medina, just like the old classic times. Duna 1 2 on Alex Sendejas. Touching it back, Vasquez, Martinez, Salcido, la puede cambiar, le pega mal. But goalkeeper Ayala is there to protect the ball. Gary Tobar, like you said, there is a lot of Americanista fans here, so I will be definitely rubbing this in their face. True and Yami, best believe that because I love them and because I know that this is going to hurt them till the day uh, they're able to do more about the situation, but until then, uh, Manny Maravilla, I know he's a hard Americanista fan, so he, he definitely wants to get a shot in for 1839. Chuy. Yeah, Mark with the goal. Um, and a keeper for Chivas. We now have, right now, the current third keeper for Chivas. His name is Carlos from Vallejo. He's wearing all black right now, and it's amazing to see Carlos out here. In 2013, the man Carlos went to Sueño Alianza and was a winner, and he's been with Chivas ever since. And it's cool to see him out in Napa. If you're wondering why he's out here right now, he's currently playing with Sacramento Republic U23. But I'm pretty sure in the future we might see him playing for Chivas because he's been grinding for a lot of years. And now up top with the 1839, we have Coach Mark, and we have Jimmy, a lot of experience. We have World Cup. Chelsea experience, London experience. Here you come Gary with the... Uh... Yeah, Jimmy Conrad is still looking for that opportunity. Obviously, El Empedador, Claudio Suarez is out. And he won't be able to recreate that moment where they slide tackle each other. But he's having fun out here. I think he's joining the vibes for sure. And we see Diego there, potential push from the back end. Salcido trying to... Meg uh, Sendejas there. He was trying to take a couple yards off of his run right there. He's trying to pull him with them. As we have Marco Reyes coming in from the wide area. 
Nothing, no end result. Back to Manny Manavia coming in from the same area, but it is a bit wide. Chivas get the throw. Yeah, I don't really see this too much on Nap 1839. They usually, they're not the type of crossing. They like playing in short spaces, expanding in and out, uh, but they're actually trying to go for a cross now. I'm not sure it's because uh, if it's Jimmy Conrad's presence that they want a header or something like that, but I think they have to start shooting from outside of the back if that's the case. And Marco Reyes now. Touching it with Ballon. Nap 18 to 9 with more possession of the game. But the Leyendas are sticking their stand here by trying to find some possession as well. See Vasquez again touching it to Magallon. Magallon still in the game. Yeah, it seems like there's just a lot of fun having around in the game right now for these last few minutes, Danny. I think the scoreline might be a bit solidified. Maybe 1839 can get one, hopefully get that second one back. But, you know, as it stands, Chivas are taking a lot of control of the tempo and seeing if they can find maybe one more goal for their fans, if anything. But other than that, I think they understand where, where the scoreline is treating them and what job they have to do for these next final minutes. Danny. Yes, final minutes of the game. As you mentioned, Chuy, uh, Carlos, he made the Sueño Alianza, and that's nice to actually see him play with the Leyendas, and he's having a, a, a lot of time in Chivas right now. But yes, it's going to be a nice final moment of the game uh, if Napa could actually put in a goal and wake themselves up, get themselves back into this game because they're down right now. And Omar Esparza, they're making his presence. He still looks in pretty good shape. I remember uh, waking up to his sprints. He would always outrun the left backs from the opposite uh, teams. I remember back then it was uh, El Güero Castro from America. They always bumped heads back in the day. And he had uh, enough call-ups for the Mexico national team too, which exposed him to more transfers in his career and we see Carlos there missing that up and Ballon that's with the Ballon. for 1839 no awkward offside call from Walter so they can go ahead and celebrate it oh with the worm with the worm like I said a lot of fun getting played for these last couple minutes hopefully let's hope let's hope 1839 so I have a little bit left in the tank you know they put in a number behind the behind the behind the keeper today but like I said with those questionable offside calls they got to little to no result today, so now we're walking in 3-2. Danny. 3-2, Ballon. I'm sure this is a dream come true for him, too, scoring that goal. You could see the face. You could see his, his body language. He is happy. He knows that that ball was there, meant to be for him. All his hard work paying off now for 1839, but they're still down. And we saw Reynoso. He didn't actually like that celebration, if you, know, if you guys noticed. But he was just looking at Vasquez saying, come on, guy. Let's keep this game going. The game's not over. And Napa now trying to keep this game in their control. And the fans are still up, electrified by this match. Like we keep emphasizing, not too much time left for Napa to go ahead and make a you know, quick snap decision to go ahead and switch up this goal, uh, the goal line. As we find out why, Napa's going to start penetrating in from the left. There we go. Taking on two defenders, picks up a foul. Yeah, Brian. Very nasty arm thrown into the face of the player of 1839. We go ahead. We're going to set up for this free kick. If we find an end result on this, then the game is, I mean, it, it's going to be very interesting to see who could put that last final result in. We might be walking away with a tie. Honestly, Danny, how are you feeling about this free kick? Clock is classic o Omar Esparza there, not letting the player, he's that type of guy that says either the player, the ball passes, but not both. And he he gets a hand on Brian Marin. He's trying to take him on by the speed. But like we said, Esparza there making his presence, keeping this up Ballon. for them to stay up on the scoreboard. Ballon yes, with mean? the attempt for the brace with little to no luck on that header, just went above the crossbar. And Chivas are going to go ahead and set up the attack again. They play out wide. Let's see how their left side does. Danny, how you feel like this attack's going to brew up? Could be good, but they're looking a little bit slower. And like we said, the best way to attack here is going to be through the middle for Chivas. 
And in this case, it'll be Tilon Chavez right here touching the ball that could cause some damage because Martinez hasn't been able to be quick on his feet as well as Vasquez here. So they have to build up from the middle. Potentially Salcido uh, taking a shot off from a great distance. I'm expecting that to happen. And uh, actually, I forgot to note down that Carlos Salcido was one of the only here two that uh, won two championships with uh, Chivas. His first one in 2006, and then his latest one, one of the vets as a vet in 2017, being the, the team captain for uh, Chivas Ando Matias Almeida, which uh, they both reconnected here as well. And we see Tilon here with a lot of energy. Well, Sparza otra vez. Not being, uh, Marin not being able to pass him. It's going to be a tough time uh, to go up against Esparza. 18-39 setting up from a corner off that wide defensive touch. The last corner 18-39 had, we had a goal coming off from Ballon. We don't know how this is going to set up for us. We got it sent in. Marked on the reception, sends it in the middle. Going to a goal kick. Johnny Magallon there with that fake. Again, knowing his class, knowing his game. Very smart center defensive mid. Very smart center back and at times played left back for uh, Mexico. And he's playing his game definitely. I've seen him absolutely outstanding performance by him tonight. Even with his 40-year-old age, he's still there. He's still performing. And he still looks young to me. He's, he's looking like the same guy I saw playing back in 2004, 2005, 2006, and so on. Reynoso, the classic figure. The man that was known as being the disrespectful one in Guadalajara. Now we have him here in Napa. Magallon here. Check out his swagger over Jimmy. Conrad not letting him touch the ball. 1839 to get reception of the ball. There we go. There you're going to reset the attack. Not too much time left in the game. Let's see if they can make a goal happen in these closing minutes. Vasquez, Gary Tobar, never seen him in this situation where he's playing out of the back. But now he's playing a center back role. So let's see what happens because the goal went through him already. This could be a nice switch. Chivas Salvador. At half, Chivas at the half. 1839 to recover the ball. Ballon plays out to Brian. Amari Ponce wanting a foul there, as you could see. Manny Manavia coming in from the left side. Let's see if 1839 can make an opportunity from this. Reynoso takes on Manny Maravilla. That was a fun situation to see there. Reynoso says, nope, you're not passing me today. Maravilla trying to be cheeky with the nice little... Tunnel coming in from his side, but isn't able to. Jimmy Conrad now against Reynoso. They have a little bit of beef back in the day, too. Reynoso making his presence on Jimmy Conrad's back. Chuy. As the game is starting to end, we smell the smoke, you no? Know, more and more and more. And man, it's going to be... The next couple of weeks are going to be really cool here in Napa. We have the festival, Bottle Rock, next weekend. I'm going to be there. We have the boy Jack Carlo. We have Polo G. So two events, back-to-back uh, -back in Napa Valley. We have this amazing game, the, Ch the Chivas legend with 1839 here at the Stadium. And next week we have Bottle Rock. Let's get our... Our dancing move on for Bottle Rock. Here we have a through ball. He looks good. Could he finish? What a save by Eric Vargas. Gary finding Mark. Mark going wide. Oh, Manny. What a wink a shot. And here we come. The game is about to be over. Whoever tuned in to watch the live, appreciate it. Appreciate all the support we get. It's yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know some of my new friends over there in San Diego tuning in. I told them I was going to make this flight. Left class early. Thank you to my professor, Jim, for giving me this opportunity, leaving class early for this dream coming true. 
of me commentating this game. I appreciate that. We appreciate you, like yeah, I said, tuning in from wherever you are. And you're able to see this game. I see the switch wide enough. Could the legend himself get there? It's Marco just Reyes. a little off. Marco Reyes was there to defend it. Quick throw in to Gary Tobar. Chewy, as this game is dying down, who is your favorite player of the match? Could we introduce him? Sponsored by La Morinita Market. Who is the player of the match? Yami, yeah, mean, I'll come back to you. I say I go with Ramosito Morales. Everyone came here to see him. I know he had two missed PKs, but man, that, that beautiful chip made up for it. I'm sorry he had to be on the boy Fede. That's the boy. But hey, man. Ramosito Morales had a great chip and went over Fede. That's my man of the match. Right behind him, I have Manny Maravilla. Goal! What a goal for Manny Maravilla! Golazo, 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 golazo. It's a tie. He's, He's doing his thing right there. He celebrated with the Cuauhtemo celebration, Americanista. Good for him. Great moment for Manny Maravilla, local player. That's great seeing Manny making his dream come true here, playing a couple years later. The vintage player himself scoring for Napa 1839 against Las Chivas. And it's a tied game now. It's Could the ref three, add three a games. little extra time for this game to end in someone's favor? Man, and it's 3-3. Three, three. I say we should give the fans what they want and go to penalty kicks, right? Of That'd course. That would be pretty exciting. Penalty as shootout would be nice. We do see some fans leaving at the gate as it's approaching nighttime. It's Saturday. It's church tomorrow morning. But, man, it'll be good to if they, they go to penalty kicks, that'd be very exciting. Very much so. I mean, as it stands, you really feel like someone needs to walk away a winner. Having a tie just doesn't feel like a proper scoreline. You feel like one of these two teams was more than deserving for the win. 1839 coming in with a very strong outfit, had a lot of youth to their squad, had a lot of hard work to put in those goals. Las Chivas coming in with a lot of mentality, a lot of intellectual play to make those three goals that they made very clinical, very efficient, and with minimal effort. We see Chivas coming in from a, from a free kick on the right. With these last minutes, it really is anybody's game. You know, hopefully there's no questionable calls in these last minutes. We can have some clean play, and we can really see who's deserving of this win. I don't want to see a 3-3 scoreline walking away from this. It would be very humble to see on both ends, to see where everybody lays on the playing field, but... Having those bragging rights, having that winning status is definitely something everybody did the long trip for. Definitely did the long trip for Danny. Let's see what Salcido does in this free kick. Good ball in. Reynoso. Pichilena, golazo. What a save. Goal. 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 The last team. I feel for the boy Manny. We saw Reynoso do a little, a little sneaky move on the boy Manny. Did he do that? Did he? Yeah, did he, he did. Cup check him. Yeah, Reynoso, yeah. classic. He would do that. He's laughing. He is laughing. Yeah. I just saw Maravilla go down. I would have to see the replay, but they are doing whatever Chivas does. Reynoso would do that back in his day. He'll do whatever it is to get a win, and we see it here. Estener. That's knowing the game. That's knowing the situation. It was a set-up play straight to Reynoso. He clipped Manny. He got revenge on Manny. And they're back on top. 4-3. That's the experience that they have. Let's see. We have Bella now. Doing an amazing move. Good pass. But like always, ending up by the throwing. Yeah, he actually, Marin actually is able to take on Esparza this time and try to get a sneaky left shot with the second post and luckily it goes out and time is running off the clock here and Jimmy Conrad hasn't been able to score besides that early uh, offsides move and Corbett here he could give it to Jimmy there's nothing here Manny making a move can't find Conrad or Marin the last couple minutes electrifying 4-3 some goals in the last couple minutes of the game. We have the fans here 
excited. It's looking like they all want to get some autographs after the game. Yeah, I'm definitely getting my autograph by every player. I'll tell you that right now. So after this, don't mind if we cut short of this tune-in match. And we were talking about the player of the game, Chuy, and I think you, you described it too. Ramoncito Morales, after missing two PKs in the first half, it was nice to see him chip Fede and uh, coming out with swagger and a standing ovation uh, to come out. I really liked his performance today aside from Medina, but definitely everyone came to see Ramoncito Morales. Oh yeah, for sure. My dad's usually a homebody, same as my grandpa, and they're both out here. And they brought their shirt. They want to get an, an autograph by Ram Ramosito Morales. He's an icon for a lot of us. Inspired a lot of us how to shoot free kicks and how to curve. Salcido now. Going for a, a great ball to Diego Martinez. Could he volley this? That was a goal. I don't think that was offsides. That wasn't offsides. But over here we have another character as well. The referee from Vallejo. The Mary Island with another... Really questionable call. Very questionable call. That shouldn't have been an offsides. He was clearly onside there. But Napa still has a chance. Tilon controlling. Esparza. Salcido la cambia. Se la pone. Amaury Ponce. Se la pone al segundo. Palo. Aquí puede marcar. Vázquez que no puede. Y ahora sí viene Vargas. La manda al fondo. Para Corbett, Manny Maravilla, vea Conrad. Ahora sí lo manda. No hay Jimmy nada Conrad's de clear, no call from Walter. And a great save. Jimmy Conrad isn't able to finish that. Johnny again, Magallon, impressive. I, f I think, aside from Reynoso, I think Johnny Magallon from minute one with that slide tackle, I think he's been outperforming in the back, keeping Chivas safe tonight. Yeah, that'll probably be my other man of the match. It's looking like he just retired, honestly. A really great player, really skilled. The boots might be hung up, but the skill never leaves. It's permanent. 1839 with another corner with no product and result. Full clearance from Chivas, but Gary Tovar to send it back into traffic. There we go, Chivas with a collective effort. And the game, and four to three. Four to three, Chivas. What a view, what an atmosphere out here. Thank you for tuning in. Chuyachua.